Hi guys, a very warm welcome to our webinar this year's series of 2023. Um, also a very warm welcome to our uh, already users and also to my colleagues, Carlo and Jan Willem, who are available for all your questions in the private chat. During this webinar, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to uh, ask them in the public chat. I will read along and maybe we can help you and show you those things straight away. So to start off, um, we would like to know something about you guys as well. So down below, you will see a question and it is if you have seen a webinar before, we're very curious about that. So if you could please all fill in uh, then, uh, Let's see where we start. Okay. Some of you guys have, some haven't yet. Okay, perfect. Um, we're also curious what if you are using Noxport already. So there's a second question down below. Um, please fill that in so that we can adjust to and explain something about the differences in between the versions. So we have a, most of you guys are using basic plus, some scout pro and elite. Um, for the six that are not using it at the moment, uh, we hope to welcome you soon. Uh, if you have any questions regarding licenses or any more questions about this program, uh, you can also contact Carlo and Jan Willem directly um, and they can help you out with any questions as well. Okay. Then we also like to know, last question, last question. Also like to know what sports you guys are involved in. Um, what is your main sport? Just so that I can hit up some differences in sports as well. It's a lot of field hockey and soccer. Someone from Corfball. It's really nice to have you guys all here. Basketball as well. Sweet. Okay. Most of you guys are in soccer. Okay, perfect. Okay, then let's dive into uh, this program. I'll quickly show you around in this program and explain to you where you can find all the features and then I'll show you how to use it in a bit. Let's have a look. Okay. <clears throat> so here you can see I've opened up Noxport Basic uh, Plus. So for the basic users, you will see some extra features and for those using Scout, Pro or Elite, you might miss out on a few features. If you have any questions about that, uh, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer them and we'll probably move them to the end of this webinar. Um, so feel free to ask anything about other versions as well. Uh, but today to show you guys, we decided to put up Basic Plus. Okay, so this is basically your main screen. So when you start on uh, and open up Noxport, in this case, Basic Plus, this is what you see. Um, there's a logo on the left side, which you can change to the logo of your club, um, which is pretty cool, actually. Uh, if you haven't been updated to the latest version yet, this is the newest version that we are currently using. And it's the version that is launched in August last year. If you haven't updated it yet, um, I'd really recommend to do so. Um, it's really cool with some really added new features added it. So it's pretty cool. Um, just to check if you need any support or if you want to update to the latest version, there are support and updates on the left side. Uh, you can use the remote support if you need any help with that. Uh, you can find the user manual here, some video tutorials on YouTube. You can check for updates. You can also select auto check for updates, which makes sure that you're always using the latest version. Um, and you can put and activate and deactivate your license here as well. So in this case, we'll open up when we have six titles on the main screen. And if you go to the three dots, then you have the main menu. 
and then you can select whether you can ha select up to six and you can select uh, whatever you like to have there so if you want to have register from file uh, register in real time um, and maybe my analysis and then go for open button template and if that's what you like if this is how you like it then you can select that it's all up to you it's very customizable okay so in this screen you can also find um, we have launched the next port for mac os last august not all features but most features are in there and there will be more features coming so you can if you want to work with someone with mac os then you can import stuff from mac os uh next port into your windows os or uh, you can export from your windows os to uh, mac os um, so if you want to import a button template from mac os if someone sent you a button template for mac os then you can import it here and then it will make it into a windows operating system template so if you want to export something such as a button template uh, or presentation or analysis then you can also export it from here to mac os version which you then can share with someone you're working with for instance underneath file you can do the same things as you could do before so you can make a new button template you can open a current uh, button template you can open a database real-time register, register from file and analysis. And underneath tools, you can import from Tech and View, which is our iPad and iPhone app that you can use. You can import an XML file, for instance, if someone's working with another type of video analysis structure or uh, you might have downloaded an XML file. You can import CSV files, uh, instats. So for those who are into basketball or soccer, then you can use instats and you can find it there and you can import it in this way. You can also use the Wi-Fi import from your iPad when you're using Tech and View. There's the video comparison, re-index video file. Uh, you can merge videos, first half, second half, uh, quarters into a one video change the language and then there's coach station and if you want to use coach station um, which is really cool but you need to have to be able to have the live um, video analysis and in order to use coach station the one that is sending the video should be using pro or elite so you can put coach station on this laptop for instance but you need a pro or elite version in order to use it correctly so then um, you can also follow us of course facebook twitter youtube and you can go to the noxport website um, if you have any questions on specific things you would like to do in this program please use this button and go to noxport on youtube because there you will find instruction videos uh, and it's really cool and it really helps you through the program so if you have anything you can find the videos out there um, really cool okay so um basically there's in basic plus you can use register from file if you have recorded a game you can use register from file you can open the video and you can tag your games if you don't have a video source you can register without a video source and if you want to register in real time then you can do that right here as well you can have you you have your analysis under my analysis so every previous made analysis you can find back there you can open a button template to maybe change some things and you can have make a new button template so let's dive a bit deeper into analysis then i will show you around in the program and then later on we will get back to uh, how to make a template which features can be used in this template and how to tag a game 
to get to the end result. But we will now show you the end result. So we used this one yesterday in the webinar, same webinar, but I'll show you now. So you will have your video on the laptop, and then you will have your timeline down below. And there are some new features in here that I would like to show you around. So start off with the basics from the video itself. Um, you can use the space bar to play and pause the video and you can go back and forth with uh, the V, you will go back and the B, you will go forward, fast forward. With the N and M, you will go frame by frame. Uh, if you hold it, it will go back uh, continuously in slow motion. Then you can use the arrows um, and you can change that in how you like. So it's five seconds forward by pressing the arrow to the right, five seconds backwards. Okay. If you want to change it, then go right click on the video, keyboard video control, and then you can see the keyboard options and you can short skip five seconds by using left and right using up and down it will go 15 and if you hold shift you can use 60 seconds also the things i've just explained spacebar uh, m and n and b and v so that's how to use the control the video of course you can mute the video as well if you'd like so for the timeline um, we updated the timeline uh, and you will have your categories on the left side. So the line that you chose from the categories, so if in this is a build up, then you will have your build ups lined up on the left hand side. On the right hand side in the middle in this block, you will find all the descriptors. So then you can go straight into a descriptor. So for instance, if I go to this clip, then it's a build up and it has a descriptor first half good and over the left side so basically you have a category which is an event which is something that's happening and a descriptor is uh something that says something about the event so if you have a build up it can be over the left through the center or over the right side and it can be good or bad or it can happen in the first half and that are Kind of descriptors that you can use um, if you click on the descriptor so uh, for instance good it will go there minus two seconds um, so that brings you to that specific moment of the clip so if we take this one then you'll see a difference so i decided that it was a good build up on 51 seconds and it went over the left side and first half was added automatically. So that's basically a bit on how you have it when you start in. There's a possibility to change that. And you can do that right here. So if you change it, you will only see the categories and not the descriptors. And the descriptors will be in the back right here. Of course, you can change the window sizes as well. If you wish to show the timeline only, then it's this button, or you can show the category with all the descriptors. So you can select the category here, and then you will find the clips together with all the descriptors. So to go through the timeline, um, you can set your own timeline style. So this is my timeline profile. You can have the normal timeline profile. And for this instance, is my colleague, Carlo. So if I open up that, you will see that it changes. So he has a normal one. And if I change it back to me, then you will see that my lines are colored. So I chose to have a different one. So if you are working with multiple people on the same computer, for instance, a head coach and an assistant coach, or maybe a video analyst, then they can all have their own timeline profile. If you go to this button, you can set up the timeline profile and you can select the toolbar. So you can select where you would like to have all the tools. 
if you would like to have the tools, and if so, where. And there's different timeline styles. So I'm now in my own one. So I can go to timeline styles. And because I was doing a video analysis, I would like to have all the features down here. If you have a head coach that only does the presentations, you can only put presentations in there, uh, which I will show you. So if I go to Carlo, and for instance, Carlo is the head coach, and he will not be tagging. So I will delete this. And then I will delete continue registering as well. I'll delete the data matrix because he's not using it. And dashboards and continue registering. Okay, so uh, for Carlo, if he's only doing the presentations, then I will just import the presentations. Now presentation is there. He might want to see a dashboard, so we will add the dashboard and then we put a space in there. And then he might want to look into the data matrix, but not sure, so we'll put it down there. And then he can choose timeline style, for instance, style number three. It's different from what I'm using. And then we select style number three, and that's the way to set up your timeline profile. So this is now his timeline profile. You can see presentations, dashboards, data matrix. If I go back to my timeline profile, then you will see all the features, um, which we will dive into later. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and I'll be happy to answer them as well. Some other cool features. Um, the anchor, you can place them together. So if we put it here, then they're connected. Um, you can undo that. You can choose to use the whole screen or get it back to where it was. So like that. Um, that's it. You can see the time. And this is where you can see the score. If you set it up in your template, which I will show you, then this is where you can see the current score. So if I go a bit further and take it past the first goal, then you can see it's one zero. So that's where you can see the score. Basic stuff in your timeline to go through. If you want to zoom in or zoom out, this is the way to do it. So just click and drop it wherever you want. So if you want to see the full game, or if you want to dive in a bit deeper into the game, then you can select a certain period. You can zoom out and that's basically it. So if uh, for the clips itself, to go through the clips, if I click on build up, then by using one and two, I can go to the next or the previous clip. So now I'm pressing two and I will go to the next clip and I'm pressing two again and I will go to the next clip. If I'm pressing one again, I will go back one clip. If you want to add, change uh, a category, for instance, the time or a descriptor and you want to do that afterwards, there's a several ways to do so. So if, for instance, this clip starts here, then this one is uh, selected. So if you're using the eye, it will start here. And if it starts here, then you push on the eye again. And then it stops here, for instance, and you put on the O from out, and that's where it ends. So that's a way to um, change the duration of the clip. If you then go to the next one, you can also do it by hand, clicking, dragging, dropping to wherever you'd like to have it. You can pick up the whole line and move it as well. Then there's another way to do so by right clicking on it. Then you can say edit register properties and that's where you can do a little bit more, such as adding descriptors later on, write some notes, or even add an audio note. That's also the way to go through the next ones.
So if you want to do that afterwards, this is your way to go. So um, presentations, if you want to add something to a presentation, it's very easy. When you're on the clip, please make sure you're only on one clip and you press on number three on your keyboard, then it will open up the presentation. You will find your list on the left side. You will find all your clips in here on the right side. And so we name this build up. Good. And then you can go through the build ups and okay. And say, I don't want this one. I don't want this one. No, it's not good. Yeah, this one is good. I want this one in my presentation. Then you just press on the three and you can continue go your build ups. That's the way to add something to a presentation. You can all also do that by right clicking and then say, edit to a presentation the other way. Any questions so far? Okay, question from Dan um, about different timelines. Um, you can share your analysis by via email, for instance, and then someone with the same video, same length, same exact same file can merge them together and open it up. Um, so then, yeah, they can switch from uh, timeline. Perfect. Okay. Um, just go a bit deeper into the presentations. If you want to make a new list, you can do it right here. And then let's say we want to see all the bad presses. Okay. I'll just say bad press. Fine. And then we go through our press line. And then we will say, okay, this is a good press. So I don't want this to be in there. Let's say this is a bad press, which is because it says bad press. Then we select the tree again, and then you have two lists with clips in it. Uh, you can also add clips from different lines to the same list. So for instance, if I want to have this one in here as well, then I just press on the tree and it will be in there as well. Uh, you can put clips in it for multiple times. And then you can say, okay, I want this in slow motion as well. So if you choose to put something in a presentation, you can change it in the presentation, but it doesn't change it in your timeline. So if I open this up and I say, okay, this is my slow motion video, then you can maybe shorten it a bit Let's say, okay, but I want it to start here. And then I want it to end here or here, for instance. Then it only changes the one inside your presentation and not the one on your timeline. If you want to edit, you can write notes to it. You can do some other cool stuff, add audio notes, um, you can mute the video, stuff like that. You can also draw into the picture uh, and it will only happen in your presentation. Of course, you can drag and drop as well. So let's say we want it to start here and move up to uh, here, here. You can then use this clip to set be set as a slow motion clip. So that's a bit how you add and change your presentation. Then you can add images. So just images of a page or whatever you like. You can import a Microsoft PowerPoint. 
and you can have video transitions. You can hide some columns and order them by name, time, color, video name. So then there's this button, it's sharing. Sharing is our online sharing program, uh, which is very cool to look into. It's a way to share your videos with your team. And you can share the whole video, um, including the timeline, or you can just upload presentations like this. So then they will only see the presentations. If you want to know more about, go to sharing.com or ask one of my colleagues and they will happy to help you out with sharing. If you want to make a video of that, then you can press this one and then you can say, I want to make a video about the selected list, which is bad press or all lists in separate files. So then you will make two videos actually. So um, that's the way to do so. Press it, then say, hey, maybe want to add a logo or something, club logo, whatever uh, possible. Okay, that's where you can find it there. Then if you want to go over into presentation mode and you want to give the presentation to your team or your staff or whoever, click on here and then you'll find your video together with your presentation. Um, first list, you can find it there. Second list, there. So you can find the descriptors here. You can find your notes and you can put this on a second screen, for instance. Uh, very nice to know is that we have Noxport Remote, which you can find in the um, App Store. It's only for iPhones and iPads. Um, very cool. You can just open up your computer, put it on the screen and use your mobile phone or iPad uh, to use it as a remote and then play and stop the video, or go to the next or the previous clip. Um, please make sure you're in the same Wi-Fi, on the same Wi-Fi network. Um, otherwise it doesn't work, but it's a very cool feature. If you'd like to know more about you can find a video of that on YouTube as well. Uh, it's called Noxport Remote. So very nice. It's for free. You can find it out there for free. Pretty cool. Um, that's the way to do so. If you want to draw into your picture during a presentation, you can draw on pictures anytime. I'll show it to you later as well. So let's say, um, we're in a presentation and I want to draw something and you're behind your computer, just open up. There, or if you want to go to uh, and do it up front. So when you're making the presentation, you can open this, this for instance, you can open it, then go to anytime you'd like to have the presentation, which is, okay, this. And if you want to draw, you can find it out here, which is clip draw. In my case, motion. Um, this is where you can do clip draw motion as well. Clip draw motion is very cool. Um, but in this case, it's not so. Yeah, it's perfect. But if you like to know more about clip draw motion, there is a webinar coming up. Clip draw motion is where I can use uh, and like track players, um, cool stuff they do on TV. And so, so this is where you can find it. Uh, if you want to use um, just a simple drawing, you can find it here as well. And then you can say, okay, I. Um, let's go back to and have another frame. So it's better to show you guys. So here, up, I'd like to have this frame and then let's draw on this frame. And then we say, hey, we can see this player. And then you can set around around the player like that. Obviously, you can delete things as well. If you want to select multiple players at the same time, select this one, go player, player, and you'll get some lights. 
you can delete that as well. If, for instance, in this case, you can say, okay, I want this ball to go from here to here. And then you can say, hey, there's some free space around here. And that's how you can make it. You know, of course, you can change things as well. So if you want the arrow to be blue and the landing spot to be green or a landing spot to be orange, then it's all possible. So that's the way to do so. Uh, of course, you can make several options. So if you want to have a direct ball from here to here, then you can show that as well. So that's how you use ClipDraw Basic. ClipDraw Basic is integrated in all versions. If you wish to upgrade to ClipDraw Animate or ClipDraw Motion, then please contact Jan Willem or Carlo and they can arrange that for you guys. Um, pretty cool, especially ClipDraw Motion works very good. Um, so definitely something to check out maybe after this webinar and just go to clipdraw.com and just check out ClipDraw Motion. Very nice. If you want to know more about, there is a webinar coming up, so uh, keep our social media uh, close and you will find a way to get yourself into the ClipDraw webinar. So this is how to make a drawing onto your screen. So um, we've been through presentations, timeline, video, um anyone has any questions so far okay um then just a bit more, uh, something that I forgot to mention. Presentations, you can continue registering. So if you want to continue registering this clip, uh, so this video, then you can do that with this button, which I will show you in a bit. Um, you can make a video, illustrate, which is what we just did. Video comparison, uh, everything has video tutorials, so you can find it down below on the button. You can export it and you can export this timeline in an XML file or an export file. You can also put it into Excel, uh, CSV, stuff like that. Um, very cool. Dashboards, something that is available from basic plus onwards. And you can select um football for this All right. so and if you want to know more about dashboards then uh, you can find it online and you can select go and just learn how to make your own dashboards um in the basic version on windows you also have the dashboards um, but the dashboards only contains categories and you cannot use the descriptors because descriptors are available from basic plus onwards. Um, but you can use it for a lot of stuff, other stuff. Pretty cool. Um, you will have just have less options for basic plus. You can, for instance, have, um, goals uh team a team b compared to each other stuff like that and i'll just show, quickly show you a dashboard which looks cool uh something like this uh this is a hockey dashboard but i can show you um in together with our friends from analysis pro who made this dashboard pretty cool um but you can find long corners left and right penalties uh that ends in a goal ends in no goal uh, stuff like that is something that you can you do in your dashboards. Pretty cool. Uh, definitely worth diving into when you're ready for it. Um, 
gives you such a good overview. Dashboards. Okay. Then the data matrix, which shows you clips. And in this case, you can see uh, you will find your categories here and your descriptors on the top. So first half, second half. So you can see we had five buildups in the first half, one buildup in the second half, um, three good buildups, one bad buildup. If you click on the numbers, you can find the clips. So you will only find the clips. So in this case, the three good buildups can be found here. Also from here, you can put them in a presentation by pressing on number three, and they will put it in the list you have open like that. So that's to use the data matrix. Uh, you can find totals on the sites. If you want to know more about, there's uh, also a YouTube video about that um, or follow and go to one of our other webinars um, where we will explain dashboards, presentations, um, data matrices a bit more. Um, if you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate. I'll be happy to answer any of them. So <clears throat> of course the registry pro properties which we use with our right click, but you can find them back here as well. That's the way to change it and change the descriptors, uh, add some more descriptors afterwards. Um, very cool. So under options, if you go to the options button, then you can say show score, which is this thing, if you set it up in your template. And of course there's timeline options, um, something that you just can open up and have a look at on your own computer. So, that's a bit of the basics of the timeline, video, presentations, dashboards, data matrix. Um, please let me know if you have any questions about this, and then I will show you how to make a template and how to make a timeline from a video. So then we'll start from scratch and then we'll build up templates, start registering, and I'll show you how it's done. So feel free to have any questions. Um, good questions from Richard. Can you show the graphics into a presentation? Uh, yes, that is possible to do when you export it as a picture and then import it as a, a picture in your presentation. So you save the dashboard, um, load it with all the stuff, which I will show you. What I just did is basically press the L, which opens up the last database you've worked on. Nice shortcut. Um, if you want to do so, so if you want to add the dashboard into your presentation, then you will go to your dashboard. And for instance, let's take this one because you guys already saw this one and it's a pretty cool one. If you want to do that, you can see the options and then you can export it right here and export it as a picture. Then you can save it as a picture like that. And if you are in your presentations, and then you can import it here. So let's say add an image, and then you can import it here, save it here. And that's the way to put it in. So um, that's the way it goes. Any more questions from you guys? Good question from uh, Lars. Is the hockey dashboard available? Um, yes, it's available. I'm not really sure if I have the template that belongs to it as well, 
but I can have a look and be happy to send you something. So uh, please hit me up in a private chat and send your email address and I will send it over to you or we can show you some other um, templates as well. But yeah, possible. Um, question from uh, Dries, is Noxport also available to use for live tagging? Yes, you can do it in multiple ways. You can use real-time register. So that's when the video uh, is, I cannot do that because my camera is connected to this, but normally if you have a camera set up, um, then you can use it live, or you can say, I want to register without a video source. Then you can register, start registering with a video without a video source. Um, so, question from Richard: Is the dashboard is there also a dashboard for soccer? Uh, yes, there is. And on naxport.com, you will be able to find some nice templates as well as and i'm hoping that maybe your willem or carlo can put it into uh the chat but it is available and you can download some samples or uh, i already found it nosport.com slash samples uh, i will put it in the chat um, so you can find it here uh, on this link i'll show it to you guys as well otherwise you'll be looking it up uh, this is the way to find your templates. The links in the chat, Windows or Mac OS. Please make sure that you pick your operating system. So let's keep it for Windows. And then you can see you can download soccer fields, which are uh, and a lot of other fields as well. Uh, a lot of the times they're already downloaded. So they're included already in your Noxport download. Um, not all the time, but most of the times, I think with the latest version, it definitely is in there. Uh, but you can also download it here and you will find templates, uh, together with dashboards because your dashboard is always linked to your template. Uh, so you can find it here for Padel, volleyball, uh, soccer, uh, soccer scout onwards. Please be, make sure that you pick the right one. So this is for basic and tech and view only categories. Um, because if you download a scout onwards or a pro onwards, it won't work because it has either too many buttons or it has things that is that are not available in your uh, basic or basic plus. You can also download uniforms. So uh, the link is in the chat, so you can find it down there. Uh, feel free to download it, fill in your um, email address, and then you will receive a link to download it. Pretty cool. If you need any help with that, please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, and you can always ask us to watch along or send you something to use. OK. Um, any more questions? Okay, then let's move on. If you want to open a button template, uh, so I'll show you what a template looks like. We open a button template and then let's select a button template. This one, this is one I made yesterday with the other group. Okay, so just to give you an example, you will have categories, you will have descriptors, and you can also have automated descriptors. Um, normally, you will have a normal button, which is, for instance, goal team A. That is a normal category. The normal category works the moment you click on the button. It has, in this case, 
five seconds prior to the click and five seconds after the click. You can change that. So if a goal happens, then you might want to have 30 seconds before you click and five seconds or maybe even zero seconds after a click. That's how the normal categories work. If you want to have managed to have the time manually, then you will go to, for instance, have a build up and you're not sure how long the build up will take. So from start uh, to where it ends, then it's obviously varied on the build up itself. You can select manual mode. And in manual mode, the difference is that when you click it, then it will start running. So you push in the button and the next time you click it, it will stop. So you can decide when it starts and when it stops. That's the manual mode. In the manual mode, you are able to exclude other buttons. So if you are building up, you're not pressing at the same time and the ball's not out of play at the same time. So you can use one of the three at the same time. So if you're building up, you're not pressing and the ball's not out of play. You're just building up. The moment if build up is running, the moment you, the ball goes out of play and you press out of play, then when out of play starts running, build up stops running automatically. That's the way manual buttons work. When the ball is out of play and the opponent takes the ball and you start pressing and you press on press, that's the moment out of play stops running. So those are the types of buttons that you have. Then as, uh, sorry, just need to restart this. Um, open the button template again. Then if you have a descriptor, Descriptor is always something that says about the category. So for instance, a buildup and a buildup can be good and bad. And a buildup can be over the left side, the cent through the center or over the right side. Those are things that are descriptors. If you want to change a button and put it on the descriptor, then you make a button such as this one. You go to behavior and you select descriptors. That is how you make a descriptor. And a descriptor will always be added to your last clicked category. So if you press build up and then press good and then press over the left side or over the left side and then press good, then both left side and good will be added to build up because build up is then running. As soon as you press press, then you need to select the descriptors that you want to use at the same time. And you can use the same descriptors. So the descriptor always goes to the last category or the category that is running. If it's unclear or if you have any questions, please let me know. Some nice features um, is that you can use shortcuts, which I used A as a shortcut. So when I'm registering and I press the A, build up starts running. When I press the S on my keyboard, out of play starts running. And when I press the D on my keyboard, press starts running. If I press Q, then the descriptor good will be edited. If I press W, then bad will be added. If I press Y, U, or I, then left, center, and right will be added. You can transform your categories. So just select good and then make it round, select bad and make it 
background. If you want to change multiple buttons at the same time, just click and hold. Select multiple ones and then maybe put them in triangles or rectangles. That's the way to use to edit multiple buttons at the same time. You can also add an image. So if you want to use players, for instance, and you want to add players, then you can add images of your players into your template, if you like. You can change the font, you can change the style into bold, italic, uh, you can change the color, the size, the position as well. You can show the counter or hide the counter. And because we are using good and bad for all of the three at the same time, this counter doesn't really say anything. So we can then choose to hide the counter. There's also the possibility to use a description for your button. You can do that right here. If we go to behavior, then this is a descriptor. And the red dot on the left top side is where you can see that this is a descriptor. You can also hide that icon. So now it's gone. Just make sure you know that it is a descriptor. Then there are some cool features for the descriptors. As you can see, first half, second half. It's a very cool way to use this to gain extra information. So if, for instance, we're in the first half and you select descriptor automatically added with each click, then each time I will press build up, first half is automatically edit it to your click. During the halftime break, you need to set it up and I will show that to you later on. Uh, it's very easy to do so. So you will just have some extra information and see how many buildups you had in the first half and how many you had in the second half. It's a nice way to get extra information without doing anything for it. The other thing that you can do is this, the goal, what I explained earlier in the timeline, if you want to see the score on your timeline, then you need to have a goal for team A, and then you set it as a point action, so you can gain points. So if you click that, then it has a value of one and it goes to team A. Here you can have a value of one, it goes to team B. If you're playing basketball, for instance, you can make three buttons and you can have a one, two, or three value for team A and also for team B. That's the way to do so. You can make groups, uh, make group for players, uh, that kind of stuff. I will not dive into that because it's very detailed, but it's possible if you'd like to know more about, go to YouTube. You can find it out there. If you have any questions, just contact us. Groups can be found here as well. So for the window, for the size, if you are using Tech and View, you can select this. And you can see that if I move my window, this is the size of your iPad, not the iPad Pro, just a normal iPad. But we're not using an iPad at the moment, so we just stick with this. So, simple button template. You can make it transparent to put it over the video if you like. Not sure, but if you like. For the background, you can select a color. So, if you like black, maybe you can have a black background like this. Or you can have it white, or you can add an image of a field. Maybe, if you like. To build your button template, it's nice to use a grid reference. And in order to do that, black doesn't work. Make sure you use a color, otherwise you won't see because the grid reference is black. 
if you use a grid reference, then it's easy to line up the buttons. So let's say I want this out there, and then you can see it's getting adjusted to those lines. And you can just click and drag and drop. Very easy. And they automatically adjust. It's very good. Um, so then it looks like this. Very cool feature. You can set a password if multiple people are using it and you don't want it to be screwed up by someone else. You can protect it with a password. Might be nice. If you're the only one using it, it takes a lot of time. And you can make a description of your template, maybe for what it's used for or that kind of stuff. So that's the basics of how you use a button template, how you make one. Then on this home screen of the button template, you can see the data matrix and you can set up the data matrix as we shown before. So good and bad, first and second half, left, center, right. Um, you can change the order if you like. You can also make a dashboard and you can find it here and then you can make a dashboard from this template. Easy. Last cool feature. If you are using team A and team B, then you can search for the name of your team. So uh, let's say uh, team A, and then you can replace team A with team C. And then you can see that if you look at this button and then when I press save, it will change it. So now everything with team A is gone to team C. So if I want to do the same thing with team B to D, then if you watch this again, then this is how it goes. So let's set it back because otherwise I will mess up my database. Uh, so team D gets to a team B and then team C will get back to team A. So that's the way, an easy way to change your template. If you're playing against another opponent, then you can, of course, take team B as the opponent and then you can write the name of the opponent and then all the buttons will be adjusted to the name of the opponent. So. That's the way to make a button template. Then the last things I want to show you about the button templates, then when you go to the three dots, you can open another button template, you can save it, and you can export it. And export it is very important when you want to share it with someone in macOS, or if you want to use it for tech and view. And if you want to send it in macOS, then it will make a macOS file and that file can be sent to your friend, colleague, or whatever, who's using macOS version, or you can export the template for Tech and View. That's nice when you want to use Tech and View. You can also export it as an XML file, but it's not commonly used. So that can be found under the three buttons. Now, if I want to register from a file, so I have recorded a game, then you go from register from file. You will select your file with the game. So we'll now take Italy, Spain first half and we open it up. And then in this case, I already made a database. So you can continue registering or you can start a new register. Um, so if you want to do the first half on one day and the second half on another day, you can just continue working on that same thing. You can open the timeline that you've made or you can start a new register. In this case, I want to start a new register just to show you guys. So here we have some new features. You will have your template on the right side. You will have the video player on the left side. And then this is where it gets interesting and new. You will have the play by play table. And with the play by play table, You'll find the information I will show you in a bit. And there are some other features. So 
to start off with registering this game. The game is now starting and we are now building up. So we're pressing the A or you can press it manually. Then the ball gets out of the game. So I press the S and the ball is now out of play. We are tagging for the right for the white team. So as soon as the ball goes in, we press a D and now we are pressing. We gain the ball, so we go over into a build up. So I press the A. That's the way to start with the categories, which is the same for the basic. Now, if I want to add descriptors, then we'll just play. We're now building up. And let's see at the build up where it goes. So let's say it goes over the left side or through the center. So I press center, I can do by clicking or using the U. And then let's say we've lost the ball, so it's a bad build up, so you can use the W or click it. Now, as you can see down here, build up, that's the last thing I've clicked. Automatically in the first half is edited. I didn't press it, automatically happened it. It went through the center and it was a bad build up. That's basically how it works. So now we've lost the ball. So now I'm pressing the D and it starts going. Now it's a free kick, so it's out of play. And then we wait and then it's a free kick. So free kick for us. So we go over into a build up. So as soon as the ball goes in, we press A. And This is a build up. Not really in choosing a side yet. Um, okay. Let's say left side. That's where I landed. Left side, lost the ball, so it's bad. Didn't make it to their half. Then that's the way to do it. Here you have the play by play table, and you can go back to um, if you've done something wrong or you want to edit it, you can go back to that moment. So if I want to go back to the press, then it's this one. This is where we start pressing. Well, we didn't actually start pressing. So if I want to delete it, I can delete the register. I can also delete the descriptor. If the descriptor is wrong, then you can delete it. That's the way you edit it. So. With the first half, and this is press, but I might have been forgetting to add whether the press was good or bad. So we can open it up, and then here you can add descriptors, delete descriptors. So if first half is, wasn't the first half, or it wasn't bad at all, then you can delete bad as well. Um, that's how you use the play by play table. Um, you can also change it. So if the category wasn't pressed, but it was a build up, if you went wrong, then you can change it by clicking on this category and then change it to anything you like. But it was a press, so we keep it on press. So then you can also add notes. So um, that's also possible on this screen. If you double click on press, then this is your same register properties again. Write notes, type nice press, for instance, and that's the way to go. You can also add audio notes. Let's just keep it simple. So that's the play by play table. We've introduced in the latest version. Um, on all versions, the dynamic timeline. And it's a timeline that you are producing, but then you can already see the timeline. You can also open a dashboard. If you've made a dashboard for this template, then you can also open it up and then have a look during the game at your dashboard. And maybe if you're working with two screens or anything, something you might use. So let's get further into the game. Play by play table, I select the last 
So I do not know where we were. So um, if, let's say, this is where the first half ends, then I will just right click on first half. I will go to deactivate auto add descriptor. And then I will right click on second half and say activate auto add descriptor. And then from that moment on, if I press build up, because we're now building up, then you will see down here, build up, second half is added to my category. So, and let's say this is a good build up and it goes over the right side. Then you can see by pressing on the keyboard, good and right is edited as well. So we're now pressing and then let's say, for instance, if this was a goal, just so I'll be able to show you guys in the timeline. And let's say this was goal team B, I'll just press on goal team B and then the ball's out of play. If I press again, so I would just press the out of play button and you will see the lines in there. If you press again, then it will stop and then nothing is running. So if you are done registering, then you can go to the timeline using this button and it will open the timeline and it will show you your uh, video and it will show your timeline. And that's the way to set up a timeline. Then yet again, if you want to change profiles there. And so right here at this point of the video, this point in the game, it was zero, zero. And right here, you see a call has been made by team B and you'll see zero, one. So, um, this is how to do it. This is how you register a game. Are there any questions on what I just did? Anything unclear? Anything you want me to show you guys? Not sure if you guys are writing down a question, um, but if you want me to show you anything, then please let me know. Um, if anything was unclear, I'll be happy to show it again or explain it in a different way. Okay. Perfect. I'll just go through my list. I think I've been through everything so far. Okay, perfect. So, um, I think we've been through a lot. Um, might be a lot for some people. Uh, take your time. You will receive an email with the link to this webinar uh, in 24 hours. I think, um, and take your time to look back and just go through the stuff. That's totally fine. If you have any questions after watching this webinar, please don't hesitate and contact us. We are really happy to help you guys out with any questions that you have. Um, thank you guys for watching. There will be more webinars coming up. So if you're keen, um, please keep an eye on our socials. Um, thank you very much, Carlo and your Willem for assisting me and, uh, answering all your questions. One last very important thing, uh, after this webinar, there is a small evaluation with only three questions. Um, it will really help us if you would fill that out and share your ideas about this webinar with us so that we can improve our webinars and, um, 
help you guys out with anything. So um, thank you so much for today. And hopefully we'll talk soon. And yeah, I think we been there. I haven't seen any more questions. So thank you very much for watching. And we hope to see you at one of our next webinars or in real life.